even more meltdowns today. We've got stocks selling off. We've got the oil curve collapsing. We've got collateral runs, the bad steepening on the yield curve and other curves. And it's March 15th, which just goes to reinforce and confirm everything that we've been saying. What we've been saying is deflationary money. Everything that these yield curves and money curves have been warning about for more than a year, they are finally here. Now, there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to go over, a lot to, a lot to explain about not just what's going on, but why. But we got to start with the fact that the curves really, I mean, it's really remarkable. Not only did they get the scenario right, but they, were, they weren't off that much in terms of timing. If you think back last year, especially in the middle of the year, around June into July, when the curve really experienced its first big leg up in inversion or leg down in inversion, however you want to describe it, what it said was that something was going to turn the Federal Reserve around and make them do a 180 degree turn from their current hawkishness inflation fight to, to either forget the CPI entirely or something that was going to take the CPI and drop it convincingly. And they were pricing at that time. Remember the inversion in Euro dollar futures had gotten up to the December 2022 contract. And the market was saying that something was relatively Im imminent, that there was a potential that the Federal Reserve was going to have to do this U-turn toward the end of last year, maybe the start of this year. And here we are in March of 2023, and that U-turn is here. That's what the bad steepening says. So even in terms of timing, not only do the markets get the what, what right, more and more we see that, but also in terms of timing, only off by a couple months. What these inversions had been saying all along as they got larger and larger, steeper and steeper, more and more upside down, was fears, worries, concerns, legitimate concerns, rational concerns, massive hedging about a potential 2008 type scenario. Now, before you go off in, in your imagination thinking, oh, subprime mortgages, Lehman Brothers, those, type, those types of things, let me, let me explain what I mean by 2008 type scenario. A 2008 type scenario was you have a bad economic circumstance or background. You've got something like a maybe a recession building, and then you pile onto it a disruption in the monetary and financial system, deflationary money, and suddenly a, a recession becomes a really bad one, as well as financial volatility. You have the mix of those two things, unlike, say, the 2001 dot-com recession, which was a relatively mild recession with no deflationary money, we got through it. It wasn't all that bad. It wasn't much of a recovery on the other side of it, but by and large, most people don't even remember the dot-com recession. But we all remember 2008. In fact, you use the term 2008, it immediately conjures up these images for these reasons. And that type of scenario has been priced more and more into the marketplace for a very long time. The Federal Reserve they ignored it. The mainstream media told you this time is different. Inversions don't matter. And still the market hedged and hedged and hedged. And those in the market were less willing to buy, were less willing to bet against all those hedgers. Over time, the probability of a 2008 scenario got higher and higher and higher. And now the curve is changing again, telling us, that this thing is finally here. Don't shoot the messenger, that's the bad news. What does the bad steepening mean? We've got stocks, we've got collateral, we've got oil, we've got, what? we're gonna go over bad steepening, we're gonna go over the collateral runs, we're gonna explain this stuff even more, the meltdowns that continued in the market today. But first, I'm Jeff, this is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. I wish it was under much better circumstances, but I'm happy that you're tuning in, trying to get some information anyway. If you want some more information, background behind the monetary system, how to read these curves, what they're telling you, why the financial system acts the way it does, I've got research subscriptions for you, a daily briefing, uh, the deep dive analysis, where we dive deep into all these topics, as well as Eurodollar University memberships background, really classroom educational stuff, how the money system works, what is money in fact, all of that is available, eurodollar.university. 
I think we should really start today, having done that introduction, the meltdowns, everything going on. Let's go back to yesterday and remind ourselves the lesson of Bear Stearns, because I think that's exactly where we should start. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing now. And that's going to be the major, major theme moving forward, both economy as well as markets. Remember what Bill Dudley said. And again, yeah, Bill Dudley got something right. If only he had appreciated what he was saying. Bill Dudley, March of 2008, just after Bear Stearns had, had quote-unquote failed, the fact that to the extent there is stigma with the discount window, they're not going to want to come to the discount window, and that is going to reinforce the deleveraging process that is clearly underway, as is the fact that they just saw Bear Stearns go from a troubled but viable firm to a non-viable firm in three days, which means the marketplace, the liquidity is not dependable. The lesson from that, also, also the Fed is not dependable. The lesson from that, a lot of firms is going to be, oh, I need more liquidity. I need to be less leveraged. And that lesson from what happened to Bear Stearns isn't going to go away. Silicon Valley Bank, Signature, maybe First Republic, regional banks, reminding everybody of these very same lessons, that the Fed is not dependable, Marketplace isn't dependable, wholesale in particular, repo, collateral, all of these things, they're breaking down. I need to build a liquidity cushion. I need to deleverage. I need to de-risk. And liquidity cushion includes a collateral cushion as well as hedging the hell out of everything. We saw that in Euro dollar futures, especially Friday and Monday, just absolutely epic amounts of hedging in Euro dollar futures to the degree we've never seen before. You had 40 and 50 basis points moves on Friday. You had 90 and 100 basis points moves on Monday. Absolutely incredible. You had an immediate retracement uh, yesterday morning, which was Tuesday, which is consistent with the crisis pattern, but that didn't last through the day. And by the end of the day, more hedging interest came in so that the selling in euro dollar futures was a fraction of what it was in the morning. This morning so far, more like Monday than even Friday. Some of the euro dollar futures contracts, in, per in particular, the September 2023, up another 70 basis points. Now, at last check, it's only in the 50s. I say only in the 50s, which is Lehman Brothers territory from having been in the 70s. So that's three days, three out of the last four days at historic levels of hedging, of historic levels of, I need end of the world insurance. I don't care what price it's gonna be. And it's gonna be expensive because nobody wants to sell me it. This tells you, uncertain terms, that the market has absolutely no faith in liquidity, the government, the Fed, all of these things. Again, the lessons of Bear Stearns are playing out right before our eyes. And it has led to, finally, this development we've been waiting for. It's called the bad steepening because of how the yield curve actually changes. Let's back up a little bit. Let's, let's, do, let's do the background here. Inversion meant, usually means, and, and it did in, this, in the current case, where long-term rates started to rise, but they didn't rise as far as short-term rates did because the Federal Reserve is doing something the market doesn't agree with. So long-term rates are kind of pulled up, kicking and screaming as the Fed pressures and influences the short end of the yield curve. So what ends up happening is the short end of the yield curve, interest rates go up way more than the long end where you have, I've probably changed my hands here, you have this inverted curve. So short end rates are up here, longer end rates come down here. That's telling you the probability that something is going to go wrong is too high. And it's causing many market participants to hedge, to hedge in a way that would pay off when interest rates go lower. So that's not just true on the yield curve, also euro dollar futures, as well as certain derivative contracts too. So essentially, we lead in with the euro, euro, inverted uh, yield curve, euro dollar curves, which tell us probability something bad. The more inverted, the more there was hedging, the more there are concerns, which means, as I said before, the levels of inversion we reached, particularly in November and into December and January, suggested the 2008 type scenario. Not 2008, not a repeat, 
with a 2008 type scenario. We have recession, which we've already seen in global trade, as well as deflationary money, which is now breaking out wide open in things like Silicon Valley Bank, as well as these collateral runs, which I'll get to. Inverted yield curve, heavily inverted, worries, concerns, 2008 scenario. We had that up until this past week. What was next was some form of steepening. The yield curve inversion is not going to stay or stick around forever. One, one of two things was going to happen. Either the curve was, and the, the, both of those things involved the curve steepening. It was either good steepening or bad steepening. In good steepening, what would happen is as short-term rates are up here and long-term rates are down here, good steepening is if Silicon Valley Bank was the end of this, or there was never going to be a Silicon Valley Bank or deflationary money. The recession was all a big scare. If that was the case, then we'd see short-term rates stay where they are or tick up as the Fed continues to rise. And longer-term rates would rise even faster so that the yield curve would be, again, steep. Steep in a good way. That would have been a positive scenario. Like I said, the recession scare was just a scare. Silicon Valley Bank, just a one-off, no big deal. A bunch of fools who don't know how to run a bank, and that's it. But instead, what we're seeing is the bad steepening, where short-term rates are up here. Longer-term rates have already come down a bit. And now short-term rates and long-term rates both decline, but short-term rates are declining much faster than longer-term rates. And eventually, they get to be where... Shorter term rates are less than longer term rates again, and you've got the steepening. This is bad steepening because it tells you that the very things that the, the marketplace were worried about have arrived. Everything that was bothering all of these massive, sophisticated participants, pushing them to hedge, upsetting yield curves and turning them inverted, it is now here. We see this all over the curves. Remember, bad steepening, the, the potential here for lower rates over the, over the long run, because, because that's what inversion has always meant in a very literal technical sense. It meant that something was going to happen which would make interest rates fall from where they were. So the Fed pushes up here. The market says interest rates are going to go down. We don't know exactly what that would be, but we, there aren't a lot of scenarios here that would fit the bill here, that would fit, that would fit the description of turning a ultra hawkish Fed that is absolutely convinced it needs to fight inflation to completely forget about the CPI and inflation fighting and start cutting rates. What kind of scenarios would produce that outcome? Either the CPI would simply stop rising and continue and would, and it would actually fall and plummet in a convincing fashion, which obviously that has not happened. So that's not it. Or the other thing is something bad would take place that would get the Fed to forget the CPI entirely and focus on this other thing. And this other thing is the 2008 scenario where you have the potential for unemployment to rise, not just in the recession, but it is a recession combined with deflationary money, deflationary money, which brings with it financial volatility of the kind that really bothers those that the, it gets the people at the Fed to forget about their ultra hawkish inflation stance and start thinking seriously about deflationary money they never saw coming, even though the market has been warning about this the whole time. So bad steepening is the completion of the, uh, I don't even have a word for it. It's the completion of the of this ugly, ugly potential. It's where that's finally starting to become reality not just risk. So what do we see? What do I mean when I see bad steepening? When I talked about the euro dollar futures before, buying in the September 2023s, buying in the December 2023s, and the, the uh, March 24s, that's where the heaviest buying has been concentrated. But today, in particular, we're now seeing, we're now seeing substantial buying in I mean real serious buying in the very front contracts, the less liquid contracts. Now, the March 2023 just went off the board, so the front color is now June, but we also have April and May contracts as well. And what we're seeing is buying interest in April and especially May, which is the market pricing, the potential for rate cuts that happen soon, very soon, not just sooner than later, but actually soon. In fact, the buying in the, uh, the buying in the May contract was over 20 basis points increase in price. Again, as I said, 20 basis point swing in most contracts is 
ridiculously huge. 20 basis points in a May contract? That's just nuts. Again, it's bad steepening. The idea that even short rates in the short run and short-term rates in the short run are likely to start heading lower and head lower at a speed much greater than the longer run. This is exactly what we see on the U.S. Treasury curve. In the U.S. Treasury curve, it talked about the two-year note because the two-year note is just another one of these holy crap type of things. And even today, the two-year note is down another, what is it, 43 basis points from yesterday. So another historic drop at the front end of the curve, which the two-year note is highly rate sensitive. So there's tons of hedging. There's tons of pressure on the two-year note. It's down to now, what, 377 at last check. By the way, all the prices that I'm giving you today are intraday, subject to change. Uh, these are just the latest that I looked up just before starting recording. So the two-year note was down to 377, down 43 basis points. Front end of the curve collapsing far more than the long end. The long end's still down, but the front end is going down much further. Again, the bad steepening. I've talked about the six month to 12 month bill spread, which up until recently has been one of the key indicators that the thing that we're worried about, the thing that the market's been worried about has been getting closer and closer. The six month, 12 month bill spread is now minus 53 basis points, which is just incredible and obscene. Again, more confirmation the market is absolutely convinced or hedging that whatever is going to happen or whatever is actually happening right now Rates are going to go down in the near term. And here's a big one that happened just today. The spread between the three-month bill and the six-month bill, which is the next one up further in the curve. And really, this is the front end of the curve as far as the curve goes. It is now inverted. Up until yesterday, this one was positive. And now it's inverted today and not by a little. It's inverted by 13 basis points at last check, which in this part of the curve is a huge inversion. Massive, bad steepening. The thing that we've been worried about is finally here. So we have the potential effects of deflationary money. This is not about Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. It's not strictly about those. It's about systemic concerns that go beyond them. And in an upcoming video, I will talk more about what that actually is. But for now, let's, let's stick to what the markets are doing and what they're telling us in broad terms about this 2008 style scenario. Again, the lessons of Bear Stearns apply here because we can see this. Building a liquidity cushion, as Bill Dudley said, we know that must be going on. That's the financial volatility. That's the hedging. That's part of it too. De-risking and deleveraging. Again, the hedging, but also collateral. Collateral, collateral, collateral. We, I talked about it in a recent video two days ago that there was a collateral run, a real honest to goodness run that was that big, that, that much of a proportion that sort of got overshadowed by all the huge moves in Eurodollar futures. That happened on Monday. And then even yesterday, even though the tone in the morning was much better, at least it seemed to be much better, we had another scramble for collateral yesterday morning. Today, just another collateral run, especially focused in the four-week bills. Now, I should explain a collateral, sc scramble for collateral, collateral run. What happens is, number one, the collateral system isn't what you think it is. There's all sorts of fungibility. There's all sorts of reusing, repledging, rehypothecation. So there's a collateral system. There's a multiplier that expands and contracts. And on periods where dealers in particular, but money participants become risk averse. Collateral becomes less and less available, which means it herds everybody into the best quality collateral, which happened to be treasury bills. And it does so on a daily basis in the early morning pre-dawn trading because everybody has to get ready for the day ahead. You've got to unwind your transactions from yesterday in repo and derivatives. You've got to post new collateral if you've gotten collateral calls, which Obviously, people have. So in this pre-dawn period, usually, usually starts in Asia, goes through Europe, and usually wraps up sometime around the U.S. Open in ni around 9.30 a.m. So in the early morning period, you see heavy buying interest, especially in Treasury bills, clear sign that there is a run or at least a scarcity, but if not a run on collateral. And that's what we saw today. Again, these numbers are just absolutely incredible. Um, the four-week Treasury bill yield, which had fallen 
from 483 on March 9th, before the Silicon Valley spark showed up on March 10th, the four-week four T-bill yield was up to 483 and was trending modestly higher because there's a rate, there was a rate hike scheduled for next week. But 483 was already suspiciously low given the proximity to the next rate hike. Then, of course, four-week Treasury bill has collapsed. Uh, it was down to around 425 or so yesterday. Today, it's been under 410 most of the day. And just for reference, the reverse repo is currently at 455. So we're 45 basis points below reverse repo, which is massive demand for collateral. And today, it didn't show up until around 730. So it was sort of like everything was fine or relatively speaking. And then, boom, something happened. More scramble for collateral. And now we're seeing this in the oil market too, which I don't have time to go over today. I'll get to that. But oil has finally broken below its latest range. It's down to $68. Still can tango, even after the massive crude bill domestically. So the markets are continuing to melt down because the 2008 scenario that had been warned about, forecast for many, many months, is now here. The bad steepening has taken hold. Rate hikes are off the table. We're talking about rate cuts and a lot of them, which would be consistent with that. Not a replay of 2008, but a 2008 scenario where we have deflationary money, which hypercharges an already negative, bad, recessionary situation in the global economy. In fact, the two things feed off each other, which is what made 2008 so bad. You have deflationary money that is a drag on an economy that's already suffering. And as the economy suffers more, it convinces money dealers in particular that need to be more risk averse, thinking about the lessons of Bear Stearns, which creates even more deflationary money, which is an even bigger drag on the economy. And round and round we go. This is not Silicon Valley Bank. It's much, much deeper than that. So stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. Still got to talk about oil. Got to talk about what's going on in the monetary system. We'll get to that in upcoming videos. I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. As I said before, I wish the circumstances were much better. I wish I was wrong about all of these interpretations. I wish the markets had been wrong, but it appears they weren't. And in fact, in terms of timing, they didn't seem to be off by all that much. Not that this is any comfort or that's any small silver lining. So until I see you next time, please do take care.